All right, so today we're going to talk about extrema, uh, extreme values of functions, and so we're just going to basically start with the definition of it. So if you look on your handout, it says, let f be defined on an interval i containing c. f of c is the min. On that particular interval, if f of c is less than f of x for all the x and i, and then it's also the maximum if it's great, if f of c is greater than f of x um, for all the x in your interval. So min and max of a function are called extreme values, sometimes extrema of the function. We talked about min and max a good bit in pre-cal, so it shouldn't be very hard to do the extension of this and how we're going to use it in calculus. So um, the min and the max are sometimes called the absolute min and max. So basically we're going to look at some of these images and it says if f is continuous on a closed interval from a to b then it has a min and a max on the particular interval. So this first example here so the max and min are at interior points. Right here is going to be, which one's that? A max, right? And then here's going to be a min and when it's saying at inter interior points it's towards the inside of the function. If we look at this one over here, the max in that case and the min here are at endpoints of the given function. Um, looking at another one, the, the min is at what? An endpoint, and what about the max? Interior, good. And on one more, min is at an interior and max is at an endpoint. Um, also, just I think because your homework relates to this, I added some extra stuff to the right as in what values. So a max, the max value is going to be the y value of 4, and it occurs at f of 0. The min value occurs at negative 2 and is equal to 0. So the y value equals 0, but it occurs at the x value negative 2. So we'll look at another one. If you have the max here in this particular case is 4, but the min, which would typically be in, in this location there, but it's an open circle. So in that case, we're going to say the min value is none. Okay. Um, max here, in respect to the dotted line, max, max would be actually, let me, that's not shaded right there. So when we're looking at the shaded part, the max is here, which is an open circle, so we would say max is none. And the min is zero, and it occurs at f of two with the x is two. Okay, and one more, we'll look at this bottom one. So here you're going to have a max of what? None and a min of none. Just some more ways to reiterate the definition of this, just as, oh, let me get you back. Okay, so it just says, redefines a local max at the interior point and also a local min being at the interior point. So look at this graph. Here we're going to say this is a local max value, okay, a local min value, and this is an absolute min. This would be an absolute max. So if there's multiple mins and max going on, one may be deemed an um, absolute max and an absolute min. Um, so that's just the smallest minimum and the largest maximum values pretty much. So and then the, the, the comment is an interior point of the domain of a function um, f where f prime is zero is a critical point of f. So what we're going to do is we're going to start working with these critical points. And to find critical points we're going to evaluate um, the at first derivative equal to zero. Okay. And so just to give some guidelines here, you can see we have listed guidelines to find the absolute extrema of a continuous function on a finite closed interval. So we're assuming continuous in all these cases. And the first thing we're going to do is evaluate f at all the critical points and the endpoints. 
And then we're going to, at that point, once we have all our information, we'll choose uh, the least value as the minimum and the greatest value as the maximum. So let's do an example of that now. So the first one, let me get a different color. We're going to do is if I give you the function that we're going to work with, it's going to be 3x to the 4th minus 4x cubed. And we want to look at the interval from negative 1 to 2. The closed interval with um, between negative 1 and 2. Okay. So the first step said we're going to evaluate f at all critical points. So basically we want to take the derivative of our function and um, set it equal to zero. So first of all, what's the derivative of this? 12x to the third minus 12x squared, right? Okay, and then we set that equal to zero. So zero is equal to our function. It's derivative right there. Let's factor out a GCF. So what can we take out on the right? 12x squared, which would leave us with an x minus 1, right? Yeah. Okay, so when we set each of these terms equal to 0, so I set this term equal to 0, and solve, and then I set this term equal to 0, and solve. What do we find our critical points to be? So over here, right, divide both sides by 12, and x squared equals 0, so you're just going to get a critical point of taking the square root, you're just going to get x equals 0, and over here, what do we get? x equals 1. These are called critical points. Okay, so take your first derivative, set it equal to 0, that will help you find your critical point. Make sure the critical points are in the interval. So, are they in the interval from negative 1 to 2? Yes or no? Yes, they both fall in our interval, so that's okay. So we're mindful of our interval. The next thing it says to do is to want to evaluate our critical points and our endpoints. So let me, my um, critical point is my first one. I'm going to do f of 0. Okay. Um, plug that back into the original function. What happens when you plug that into 3 times... 0 to the 4th, put a 0 there. Yeah, that's an easy evaluation. We just get 0. Good. Let's evaluate at the other critical point, which is what? 1. So let's do f of 1. Okay, and so we pick back up there. We have f of 1 is equal to negative 1. The next thing we've done, so this was a critical point. This one was a critical point. Let me write that. And this one was a critical point. The other thing you evaluate is an endpoint. Okay, so one of the endpoints is negative 1, so I want to evaluate f of negative 1. And the other endpoint is going to be 2, so evaluate f at 2. Go ahead and um, get those two calculations.